spoken in countries like Uganda, you don't like this guy. of eternal life. You who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a tender shoot. And like a root out of parched ground. of my people to whom you spoke in truth. The grave of the signs was with the enemy. Yet he was with the rich man in his death. Because he had done no violence. Nor was there any deceit in his mouth. But the Lord was pleased to crush him. Putting him to death.
patient on grows weak and faint to slaughter led without complaint that spotless life to offer he bears the stripes the wounds the lies the mockery and yet replies all this i gladly suffer this lamb is christ the soul's great friend the lamb of god our savior whom god the father chose to send to gain for us his favor go forth my son the father said and free my children from the dead of guilt and condemnation the wrath and stripes are hard to bear but by your passion they
O Lord, have mercy on us. O Christ, have mercy on us. O Lord, have mercy on us. O Lord, who came to call sinners to repentance, call them still and make them answer your call. Be merciful to those who have no cloak for their sin, but have seen and hated both you and your Father. You who melts the hardness of the thief, soften the hearts of all who are penitent. You who recovered the woman that was a sinner, recover all those who have fallen away from you. You who called Zacchaeus from the sycamore tree, arouse the careless and arrest the curious. You who spoke the words of spirit and life, enlighten the ignorant and teach the unlearned. Dispel all prejudices, correct all error, establish your people in the truth of the gospel. You who called St. Matthew from the receipt of custom, deliver many souls from the slavery of the world. You who prayed for your murderers, pity those who oppose your rule and persecute your servants. You who cast out many devils, set free many by the power of your grace who are possessed by the devils of drink and lust. You who satisfied the doubts of St. Thomas, deal gently with those who can scarcely believe. You who lifted up the sinking St. Peter, support all those who are weak and unstable. You who came to proclaim deliverance to captives, pity all prisoners and loosen the chains of their sins. You who raised the dead to life, quicken dead souls to the life of righteousness. O Christ, Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Lord, hear us. O Christ, have mercy on us. O Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. Mournful mountains. 
God's own sacrifice complete. It is finished, hear him cry, learn from Jesus Christ to taken him away. Christ is risen, he meets our eyes. Savior, teach us so to
my enemies speak evil against me. When will he die and his name perish? All who hate me whisper together against me. Against me they devise my hurt. Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. For it is not an enemy who reproaches me, then I could bear it. Nor is it one who hates me who has exalted himself against me, then I could hide myself from him. But it was you, a man my equal, my companion and my familiar friend. We who had sweet fellowship together and walked in the house of God in the throng. He has put forth his hands against those who were at peace with him. He has violated his covenant. His speech was smoother than butter, but his heart was at war. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. A reading from the Passion Narrative of St. John, the 18th chapter, beginning at the first verse. When Jesus had spoken these things, these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for when Jesus, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me?
Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Let us pray, dear, heaven, dear beloved, for the holy church of God, that our Lord and God may deign to give her peace. Keep her in unity and protect her throughout the world. And may grant to us that, leading a peaceful and quiet life, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in Christ has revealed your glory to all nations, guard the works of your mercy, that your church spread over the whole world may with constant faith persevere in the confession of your name. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, but he will heal us. He will revive us after two days. He will raise us up on the third day. That he may bring you glory. So let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. His going forth is as certain as the dawn. And he will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain water and leaf. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? For your loyalty is like a morning cloud, and it's like the dew which goes away early. Therefore, I have hewn them in pieces by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. For I delight in mercy rather than sacrifice. And in the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. But like Adam, they have transgressed the covenant. There they have dealt treacherously against me. Gilead is a city of wrongdoers. And as raiders wait for a man, so a band of priests murder on the way to Shechem. Surely they have committed crime. In the house of Israel, I have seen a horrible thing. Ephraim's harlotry is there. Israel has defiled itself. Also, O Judah, there is a harvest appointed for you. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, but he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage us. He will revive us after two days. He will raise us up on the third day.
Remember, O Lord, the, repro the reproach of thy servants. How I do bear in my bosom the reproach of all the many peoples. With which thine enemies have reproached, O Lord. With which they have reproached the footsteps of thine anointed. The continuation of the Passion from St. John, chapters 18 and 19. So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoke openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I have said to them. They know what I have said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who has given to those who believe exceedingly great and precious promises, grant us so perfectly and without all doubt to believe all which you have revealed to us in Holy Scripture, that our faith in your sight may never be reproved. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But that the wicked turn from his way and live. Be gracious to me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done evil in thy sight. So that thou art justified when thou dost speak, and blameless when thou dost judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. And in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, thou dost desire truth in the innermost being. And in the hidden part thou wilt make me know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Let the bones which thou hast broken rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from thy presence. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. And sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors thy ways. And sinners will be converted to thee. Deliver me from blood guiltlessness, O God, thou God of my salvation. O Lord, open my lips, that my mouth may declare thy praise. For thou dost not delight in sacrifice, otherwise I would give it. Thou art not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. By thy favor, do good to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then thou wilt delight in righteous sacrifices, in burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings. Then young bulls will be offered on thy altar. As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked.
Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, whose property it is always to have mercy, we most earnestly beseech you to visit with your Father all who have erred and gone astray from the truth of your holy word, and to bring them to due sense of their error, that they may again with hearty faith receive and hold fast your unchangeable truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. The Passion, according to St. John, continues, chapter 18. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest. But Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of the man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself, so they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of a man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, did I not see you in the garden with me? Peter again denied it, and at once a rooster crowed.
Make haste, O God, to deliver me. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the unfaithful Jews, that our God and Lord may remove the veil from their hearts, that they also may acknowledge our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who does not drive even the faithless Jews away from your mercy, hear our prayers, which we offer for the blindness of that people, that acknowledging the light of your truth, which is Christ, they may be rescued from their darkness through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord God, Father in heaven, O Son of God, Redeemer of the world, O Holy Spirit, the Comforter, by that great love, whereby you elected to restore man when he fell. Spare us, o Christ. By your holy nativity, wherein you condescended to be born of a woman. Spare us, o Christ. By your painful circumcision and shedding of your precious blood. Spare us, o Christ. For your flight into Egypt and all that you suffered there, for your coming again from Egypt to Nazareth and your obedience to your father and your mother. For your lowly and meek conversation for 33 years on earth. For your holy baptism, for your holy fasting, meditation and temptation. for your holy tears and lowly entrance into Jerusalem. By that great lowliness, which you showed in washing the feet of the disciples and of Judas, who betrayed you, by your most noble and worthy institution of the sacrament of your most precious body and blood, for those holy bonds wherewith you were bound, for the blow you endured in the presence of the high priest Annas, for the false witnesses and shameful treatment before Caiaphas, the high priest, for your presentation before Pilate and the accusations brought against you, for the contempt and mockery that you suffered when Herod arrayed you in a gorgeous robe and sent you again to Pilate. Us, for your scourging and cruel beatings, for the purple garment and the crown of thorns violently pressed down upon your head, for the scornful worshiping of the soldiers. by your bearing of the heavy cross to the place where you suffered your most painful passion, by the labor, anguish, slanders, and beatings you suffered on the way, by your bloody steps as you went to your death, by the nailing of your right hand, by the nailing of your left hand, by the nailing of your most holy feet and the precious blood flowing out of them. Amen. For that wonderful charity when you prayed for your enemies, for your tender mercy and that you promised paradise to the penitent thief, for the tender care which you showed toward your mother, 
by that great and piteous cry to your Father, by your thirst and tasting of the vinegar, by the cry, it is finished, by the commending of your soul into the hands of the Father, by your bitter death, by the spear wound in your side, by your solemn burial in the grave of Joseph. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, O Lord, O Christ, O Lord, Lord, have mercy on us. Amen.
Listen, O heavens, and hear, O earth, for the Lord speaks. An ox knows its owner, and a donkey its master's manger. Alas, sinful nation, people weighed down with iniquity. Offspring of evildoers, sons of corruptors. They have abandoned the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away from him. Continuation from the Passion Narrative of St. John, the 18th chapter, beginning at the 28th verse. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken, to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber.
I gave my back to those who strike me and my cheeks to those who pluck out the beard. Out of the depths I have cried to thee, O Lord. Lord hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If thou, Lord, shouldst mark iniquities, O Lord, who can stand? But there is forgiveness with thee. That thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning. Indeed, more than the watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is loving kindness. And with him is abundant redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. I gave my back to those who strike me and my cheeks to those who pluck out the beard. I did not cover my face from humiliation and spirit.
Let us pray. O loving Savior and Redeemer, who not only pled the cause of mankind before the tribunal of supreme justice, and was by your Father stricken, smitten, and afflicted for our sins, but also willingly gave yourself over into the cruel hands of men, permitting them to take, bind, and shamefully abuse you. Enlighten our eyes to see the wonders of your love, the depths of your patience, and the meekness in your sufferings, that we may acknowledge you to be the Lamb of God who takes away our sins, accept your merits by faith, and willingly follow you in all our trials, all of which grant us for your mercy's sake. Amen. Amen. The plowers plowed upon my back. A continuation of the Passion Narrative of St. John, the 19th chapter, beginning at verse 1. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Let us pray for the pagans, that Almighty God may remove iniquity from their hearts, that, putting away their idols, they may be converted to the truth and living God and his only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who always seeks not the death, but the life of sinners, mercifully hear our prayer and deliver the heathen from the worship of idols, and join them to your holy church for the praise and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter. The continuation of the Passion, St. John chapter 19. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, if you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified.
Is it nothing to all you who pass this way? Look and see if there is any thing as my king. Which was severely dealt out to me. Which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. From on high he sent fire into my bones. And it prevailed over me. He has spread a net for my feet. He has turned me back. The yoke of my transgressions is bound. By whose hands they are knit together, may you come upon my neck. He has made my strength fail. The Lord has given me into the hands of those against whom I am not able to stand. The continuation of the Passion, according to St. John, chapter 19. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth the king of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written.
Behold, the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Behold, the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us adore. Behold, the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. My people, what have I done to you? And how have I wearied you? Answer me, because I brought you up from the land of Egypt, you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Because I brought you up through the wilderness 40 years and fed you with manna and brought you into a land exceedingly good, you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. What more ought I have done for you than I have done? I planted you, indeed, my most beautiful vineyard, and you have become exceedingly bitter to me. For in my thirst you gave me vinegar to drink, and with a spear you have pierced the side of your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty one, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. For your sake I scourged Egypt with its firstborn, and you have scourged me and delivered me up. My people, what have I done to you, and how have I wearied you? Answer me. I brought you out of G Egypt having drowned Pharaoh in the Red Sea, and you have delivered me to the chief priest. My people, what have I done to you, and how have I wearied you? Answer me. I opened the sea before you, and you with the spear have opened my side. My people, what have I done to you, and how have I wearied you? Answer me. I went before you in a pillar of cloud, and you have led me to the judgment hall of Pilate. My people, what have I done to you, and how have I wearied you? Answer me. I fed you with manna in the wilderness, and you have beaten me with blows and scourges. I gave you the water of salvation from the rock to drink, and you have given me gall and vinegar. My people, what have I done to you, and how have I wearied you? Answer me. For your sake, I struck the kings of the Canaanites, and you have struck my head with a reed. I gave you a royal scepter, and you have given me my head a crown of thorns. My people, answer me. How have I wearied you? Answer me. I exalted you with great strength, and you hung me on the gallows of the cross. We adore your cross, O Lord, 
and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. For behold, by that wood joy came into the world. May God have mercy on us and bless us. May he cause his face to shine on us. May he have mercy on us and grant us peace. We adore your cross, O Lord, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. For behold, by that wood, joy came into the world.
Make haste, O God, to deliver me. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Blood of Jesus. Passion of Jesus. Wounds of Jesus. Heart of Jesus. Spirit of Jesus. Love of Jesus. Mercy of Jesus. Cross of Jesus. Thorns of Jesus. Sighs of Jesus. Agony of Jesus. Lips of Jesus. A life and in death for a time and for eternity. Amen. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing they cast lots. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Out of my deliverance are the words of my groaning. O oh my God, I cry by day, but thou dost not answer. And by night, but I have no rest. Yet thou art, art holy. In thee our fathers trusted. They trusted and they did deliver them. To thee they cried out and were delivered. In thee they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man. A reproach of men and despised by the people. All who see me sneer at me. saying, Commit yourself to the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, because he delights in him. Yet thou art he who did spring me forth from the womb. Thou didst make me trust when upon my brother's death. Upon thee I was cast from birth. Thou hast been my God from my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. But there is none to help. Many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. They open wide their mouth at me. As a raging and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within me. 
My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaves to my jaws. For dogs have surrounded me, a band of evildoers has encompassed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look, they consider me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing they cast lots. But thou, O Lord, be not far off. Deliver my soul from the sword. My only life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. And from the horns of the wild oxen, thou hast mercy. I will tell of thy name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise thee. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Neither has he hidden his face from him, but when he cried to him from high hell, he heard. From thee comes my praise in the great assembly. I shall pay my vows before those who fear thee. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations will worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's. And he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth will eat and worship. All those who go down to the dust will bow before him. Even he cannot keep his soul alive. Posterity will serve him. They will come and will declare his righteousness to a people who will be born. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing they cast lots. The Passion from St. John continues in the 19th chapter. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home.
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly shall you go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. 
and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. They also gave me gall for my food. And the Passion from St. John, the 19th chapter, continues. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Behold, darkness will cover the earth.
Make haste, O God, to deliver me. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Let us pray. O Lord, our Savior, crucified victim of Calvary, we praise and bless you that you were obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And having finished all, have become our mediator and redeemer. And we beseech you, grant that by your death we may be crucified to the world, and henceforth live not unto ourselves, but unto you who died for us, yet who now lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever.
They will look on me whom they have pierced. As one mourns for an only son, and they will weep bitterly over him. The continuation of the Passion narrative according to St. John, the 19th chapter beginning at verse 31. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced.
for thou wilt not abandon my soul in hell. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who for my sake not only suffered death, but was laid in the tomb in order by your burial to hide my sins and hallow my grave, grant that I may not dig up my sins again, but leave them buried in your tomb. By your rest in the grave, Give me the assurance that after this life my soul shall repose in God's hands and my body sleep in the ground, and that at the last day I shall arise from the dust and together with all your saints praise your name through all eternity. Amen. And God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed, and all their hosts. And by the seventh day, God completed his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. This is the word of the Lord. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. That he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, to whom the sword was due. His grave was assigned with wicked men. Yet he was with the rich man in his death. Because he had done no violence. Nor was there any deceit in his mouth. the conclusion of the Passion Narrative according to St. John, the 19th chapter, beginning at the 38th verse. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now, in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So, because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there.
He will see the anguish of his soul. By his knowledge, the righteous one, my servant, will justify many. Let us pray. Almighty God, we beseech you graciously to behold this, your family, for whom your dear Son was content to be crucified. Grant us, through his blood, the forgiveness of all our sins, that we may come to the promised inheritance laid up for us in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us bless the Lord.